Good morning. Today is Tuesday, the 25th of August, and it's the 21st Sunday in the Church's Ordinary Time. Today's a feria, but a memorial of Saint Louis, King of France. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. In our first readings we've moved on from the Old Testament to the New Testament. No more readings from Ezekiel and Today's brief reading is from the second letter of Paul to the Thessalonians and, and in, him, in this letter he warns against thinking that the second coming, the day of the Lord, is any time soon. He said, no, carry on your ordinary lives, it's not about to happen imminently. But we carry on with the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 23, verses 23 to 26. Jesus said, Alas for you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you who pay your tithe of mint and dill and cumin and have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice, mercy, good faith. These you should have practised without neglecting the others, you blind guys, guides, straining out gnats and swallowing camels. Alas for you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites, you who clean the outside of the cup and the dish and leave the inside full of extortion and intemperance. Blind Pharisee, clean the inside of the cup and dish first so that the outside may become clean as well. The Gospel of the Lord. In today's Gospel, we hear two of the seven what you might call woe beatitudes, the opposite of the beatitudes. The seven beatitudes in early Matthew, blessed are the poor, etc., are balanced by these seven woes to the hypocritical scribes and Pharisees. And it's very colourful language, you know, the idea of straining out the gnat but swallowing a camel, very vivid for the imagination. But the heart of it is, that the interior must match the exterior. For example, going to great trouble to pay the tenth of tax on the little herb you pick, the cumin or the dill, um, but for neglecting mercy and justice and love. Or in the second case, um, and I think cups and plates are a metaphor for human beings, not cleaning the inside, cleaning our hearts first, and then the exterior will be clean. That phrase, mercy and justice, the word mercy there is not, shall we say, weighed up by a sombre judge looking down his nose and saying, I think on the balance of probability I'll have mercy on you. No, it's much more mercy in the sense of mother love, love that's overwhelming in favour of the child, of the person, um, giving love. Um, and it's that sense that to follow the law, we need to have the spirit of the law. It's the law of Moses and the new law of Christ. Love your neighbour, love God and love your neighbour as yourself. And that we're called to develop this inner generosity towards people. An inner sense of honesty with oneself. An inner sense of genuinely going out of one's way to give to others. To sacrifice oneself. And there's, again a touch of following Christ on the cross that as he generously gave his life for others so we should be generous in how we give time, love, attention to other people. Very difficult because it's so easy to fall into formalism and doing exterior things but the heart of it should be the interior love and care we have for others. The feast day today was not a feast day, the memorial of Saint Louis the king of uh, France in the 13th century, a great family man, man of peace,
perhaps so, though he was trying to conquer the Holy Land to get it back for the Christ Christians. Uh, what impresses me though, he was a, a friend of Thomas Aquinas, so clearly somebody who was interested in trying to come to grips and think as best one could about the intellectual and understanding of Christianity. We turn now to our bidding prayers. The response to the bidding prayer is, You are our Saviour and our God. You are our Saviour and our God. As Christians called to share the life of God, let us praise the Lord Jesus, the High Priest of our faith. You are our Saviour and our God. Almighty King, you have baptised us and made us a royal priesthood. May we offer you a constant sacrifice of praise. You are our Saviour and our God. Help us to keep your commandments, so that through your Holy Spirit we may dwell in you and you in us. You are our Saviour and our God. Everlasting wisdom, come to us, dwell with us and work in us today. You are our Saviour and our God. Help us to be considerate and kind. Grant that we may bring joy, not pain, to those we meet. You are our Saviour and our God. And we come now with the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Look with favour on our morning prayer, Lord, and in your saving love, let your light penetrate the hidden places of our hearts. May no sordid desires darken our minds, renewed and enlightened as we are by your heavenly grace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a good day. Bye.